Hey everyone, the name is Serictor and everyone, guess what? We just hit 1 million views. 1 million views on YouTube. Isn't that incredible? That happened in, uh, I think, less than one and a half years of work. That's one, uh, one and a half years of YouTubing. <laughs> we're already so high up. Uh, we're reaching for the sky and we're getting there. Slowly and steadily we are getting there. You know, today I want to talk about the power of decision making and the secret to decision making. And it can be summed up at, through a simple rule. We tend to assume that other people have stronger opinions than they actually do. We tend to overestimate how certain other people are of themselves and of the decisions that they are making. And so we tend to underestimate how important our own decisions and opinions and judgment is. So that is the matter of dominance. Dominant people are more sure of themselves and of their own worth and of their own decisions. Where submissive people are more uncertain of themselves and of their opinions. And you know, it can manifest itself in so many different domains. It can manifest as self-doubt, it can manifest as neuroticism, it can manifest as anxiety or what other people think about how you dress, about how you talk, about how you look. It can manifest in a fear of speaking out and a fear of judgment and a fear of being criticized or ridiculed. And you know, that is giving a lot of predecessors to your so-called inferior function. Carl Jung spoke of how we have a dominant self and an inferior self. You can see it in letters as there is a kind of hero self, you know, representing who you are, what you think, what you value. And then there is the rival. And when we are in the grip of the rival or of the villain uh, in inside ourselves, we harbor and we hold the villain's opinions to be the truth and the hero's opinions, our own opinions and our own values to be something stupid, silly, boring, nobody cares about it, nobody wants to hear about it. And that comes of course from kind of internalizing negative opinions and negative feedback that we might have heard growing up or things that we've just been carrying on to that might not actually come from anywhere around us. It doesn't actually have to necessarily be the case that everyone else thinks the way we do but we assume they think the way they do and there we it is we are we give more value we assume other people are more certain than they are and the thing the reason you can you, uh, what you need to do is you need to start really undermining this assumption and you need to start criticizing this assumption and finding ways to notice this and what you want to be doing is you want to be notice how often other people change their opinions how if and there are some things you can do here to make this happen one thing you can do is uh, you can if they associate with a certain political party like if they associate with the liberal party you can take a conservative opinion and you can brand it as liberal and as soon as they, you do, you'll notice that, oh, all of a sudden they are conservative. You can change by just warping their perception of something. You can warp their opinion of something. If you tell them that it was they that said it a uh, while a year ago, then they will believe it. But if you say it from yourself, they might not believe it. So there are simple tricks here. You told me this. Uh, tell somebody, you told me that uh, uh, socialism was better than communism. <laughs> And uh, suddenly they will be all for socialism and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, maybe I did say that. And yeah, maybe I do think that. And, you know, they will start talking about it and rationalizing it in, in themselves. And suddenly that will become self-evident truth. And, you know, that's the thing. People are not as sure as they, they think they are. And um, very certain people might not actually be so strong in their opinions. What might actually be happening is that they're simply taking things they see as self-evident, they're rushing, they're making a quick verdict, they're just taking something, the first judgment, and they trust their first judgment. You know, there's an important thing. Do you trust your first judgment or your trust, do you trust your second judgment after that, your, your third judgment or your fourth judgment? Like, how far do you go? How deep do you go before you make a decision on something? And here's the thing, like, some people, the quick decision makers, tend to seem a lot more sure of themselves, you know? 
uh, where people who take longer time to make decisions may seem more unsure of themselves. But the question is, isn't it maybe the case that the people who, that reach the furthest down have the strongest foundation in their own beliefs? It could be that the people that take the longest time to form their opinions are also the people that have the most deep-reaching, far-reaching opinions, the most secure opinions of them all. And uh, it might not be that the first person that talks in a meeting in a group is the one that is the most right, but we tend to believe they are. And just because they said it first, suddenly everyone tends to believe it. You know, have a group discussion. What you'll find is the first person will say something and suddenly everyone around them will agree with it. But what you really want to be looking at is not the first person, but perhaps the second person. In experiments, what they found is that the true leaders might not be the ones that are the ones that are the first with saying something, but the true leaders might be like the Ronald Weasleys, if you think Harry Potter. And why are Ronald Weasleys so powerful? What is the power of being a Ronald Weasley? Well, the thing is here, the second person to rally behind someone has a lot of power in swaying opinion. When you are the second person and you want to be the second person, you should try to be the second person in other people's lives. You're also the person that is saying to everyone else around you, hey, this guy's right. So if you find someone with a good idea and you are the first to say that's a great idea, what you are doing is you're kind of pulling the entire mass of the group behind that person. You are the kind of person that shovels everyone around you to stand and look at that person to be uh, behind everyone. You, you, you are like the actual leader, the one that's actually getting everyone together to do something. Where the leader, like the Harry Potters, or the people that somehow have strong ideas and strong opinions, they are just the people that uh, were lucky enough to have you there to agree with them, to rally people behind them. And uh, yeah, there is a power in that, a strong power in that. Now, the thing is, you want to work on becoming more dominant. It's very important to learn to become more dominant. It's not necessarily so that being dominant is always a positive thing, but it is something that can be important in a lot of situations. When I talk with people that are less sure of themselves or less dominant, I learn to be more dominant. I learn to guide and to control and to take care of the things that they don't dare to touch. And uh, I often think about this when I deal with very dominant people. I also back off a little bit and I let them take over. This is a natural strategy that I've learned. And uh, I don't necessarily value one over the other so much. Well, that's the thing. I don't actually have a very strong footing for either or. Uh, and that's also what gives me the power to kind of summon both sides and to try to look at what's best in different situations. Um, what I care most about is closure. And uh, closure is very important to me. I've been noticing this more and more in my day-to-day -day life. I think as a, there are two kinds of controllers out there. There are the judges and there are the perceivers. And judging, that's how you want something to happen over time. Perceiving, that is what you want to be doing right now. What you think is best in the moment compared to what you think is usually the best thing to do. And um, here you can think of different examples. For example, what you think is ethically right compared to what you think is ethically okay in the current situation. So you might think that it's wrong to be violent towards someone. But if somebody is uh, being very mean and very hurtful, you might change that in the moment. And you might decide this person is actually worth being violent towards. So this is important because we can have certain values opinions about how we generally should behave and then we can have certain spontaneous decisions that we make in the moment and uh, some people have stronger opinions in the moment and uh, some people have more shaky and uh, fluid values in the moment some people have stronger opinions about how things should be and more fluid opinions about and so, where other people have more fluid opinions about how something should be. So as an example, you might have, you might not have an opinion about the death penalty, but 
uh, if in a situation where somebody has done something truly terrible towards somebody else, you may still be against killing that person. You may still think, oh, I don't want to kill that person. I don't think that we should kill that person, even if they have done something bad. We should lock them up. I should not uh, kill this person. We should not do anything bad. We should just make sure they are tied up and that they won't hurt anyone. So you might feel that in the situation very strongly, even though when you have to vote on the death penalty, you don't really care. And that's because perhaps uh, you give more opinions, you give more credence, you care more about uh, what's happening in the moment. And you're more an adaptive decision maker. And adaptive decision makers are very powerful. Uh, sometimes stereotypes will paint adaptive types as easygoing and free flow and they don't care about either or. Uh, and they're always wibbly wobbly changing everything. Oh, everything's always up and down and oh, it can be anyway. But adaptive types can have very strong opinions in the moment. They can have very strong opinions about how to do something. Uh, they might not study up on color theory to define how best to organize a room with paintings, but they might still have a very strong opinion about where that particular painting should be. So that's adaptive opinion making. That's adaptive decision making. If you're an adaptive decision making type, you will have a lot of opinions about where to place paintings and uh, how to treat other people in day-to-day -day situations. Uh, you might have strong opinions about all kinds of matters regarding life and individuality. Adaptive decision makers care a lot about those particular spheres of decision making uh, in life, real life situations, in real life in scenarios, uh, <laughs> in things that are happening here and now. And they might also have very strong opinions regarding their own individuality, how they dress and what they do and what they say and as a people, as persons, as individuals. Adaptive decision makers care a lot about those in, that individual sphere and uh, that sphere called life, you know, our environment and the world around us. The goal-oriented decision makers, such as myself, we value closure a lot, and that is basically being able to see something true, that's making a decision and being able to see something true. Every time I can make a decision and see it true, that increases, that gives me closure and that increases my willpower. Every time I make a decision and I'm not able to see that through, it hits my decision making, it causes me stress and it uh, makes me more unsure. It hits me on a level where I feel perhaps less interested in uh, basically it reduces my willpower and it re reduces my belief in self and in my own opinions i start doubting myself and my own ability if i can't do this if i'm not able to see that true what other things won't i be able to see true and that makes me less wary of more wary of making decisions so it's very important to recognize who you are to take care of that. As an adaptive decision maker, you need to feel impact. You need to see things in your day-to-day -day life that you have decided you have to have and surround yourself with things, own personal decisions about how you dressed, how you acted, how you did, and how you handled all kinds of situations. You need to have things around you that you feel you have decided and have had control over. As an adaptive decision maker, fill your life with personal decisions and adaptations and changes that you have made, things that you have done for yourself. As a goal-oriented decision maker, fill your life with closure, basically things that you have worked towards, projects that you have completed, things you have seen through, things you have made happen, you know, things that give you a sense of confidence because you've done things and you've set out to do things and you've completed them over longer periods of time. That's very important and that builds dominance and that builds willpower and that allows you to take on stronger projects afterwards. Failure reduces willpower closure gives yields willpower and this is also why you need to be very careful with what projects you take on you don't want to take on projects you know you can't complete you don't want to read books you know you don't want to finish you don't want to start up uh, movies that you don't know if you will want to watch to the end and if you have started it you will want to finish it you want to see it through to the end if you have opened a book you want to you want to read it to the end final chapter to the last word uh, simply to build that closure and to give that relaxation, that relief and that confidence. And the secret to, to decision making is just that, giving yourself 
uh, credence, giving yourself uh, what you need to make decisions and putting yourself in a situation where you can comfortably uh, exercise influence. Basically, you want to put yourself in a situation that will give you power and control. So, it also has to do with uh, realizing that other people don't have as strong opinions as you thought they did. And here's the thing, other people don't care about how you dress because they are too busy caring about how they dress. Other people don't care about the, how you like to cut your paprika for dinner because they don't, they always mix it up. They don't really, and perhaps they have their way, but that doesn't mean your way is wrong. You know, in the end of the day, your opinions matter just as much as anyone else. And when you tell yourself they matter and when you reinforce that, you're also giving yourself value and you're making yourself feel better about yourself. The thing is, what I've noticed, everyone that distrusts their own decision making, everyone that has self-doubt also feels struggles with a kind of bad self-esteem. They struggle with their own self-worth and they, they often assume that their own opinions don't matter and that they don't matter as yes, an extent of this because our decision making is strongly linked to our belief and our trust in self. And that's all I have to say on this topic today. If you like this video, if you resonate with this message, share it with your friends and let's build our channels bigger than ever. Let's say 2 million, 5 million, 10 million. And of course, if you have your personal stories about decision making and how you became more confident in yourself, share them in the comments down below. Let other people know how they can become more confident and how they can build their decision making. And tell me, of course, are you an adaptive decision making type or are you a goal oriented decision making type? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.